Today, me and Tuck are going to share with you our new clever method for starting seeds. This will change the way you garden. Let's go! We're going to jump right into the process of starting seeds, and a little later on, I'll go into detail about timing. Let me show you the growing medium that I like to use. I prefer starting my seeds with a good potting mix. Happy Frog is my favorite one, but it could be a little expensive and hard to get. Really, any good organic potting mix will do. In most potting mixes, you're going to find some sticks and some pine bark, like this right here. Even though they're relatively small, this can disrupt the seeds when sprouting. So what I like to do is use a sifter. You can either make one yourself with some quarter inch hardware cloth like I did right here, or you can get one of these. I saw them over at my shop. This is really convenient, it works really nice. So what we're gonna do is dump our soil into here and then sift out the big stuff. This will make it a lot easier for our seeds to sprout, especially the small ones like lettuce, arugula, stuff like that. So let's get sifting. There we go, it's all sifted. You'll see what's left. See, some of this stuff would have been really annoying, especially when you're trying to even put this soil into a cell. It's better to just sift this stuff out and this makes it so it's a lot easier for the smaller seeds to sprout. Now, we've sifted our potting mix and have a nice refined seed starting mix. At this point, the structure of the soil is more important than the nutrition because seeds, when they germinate, contain within them enough energy and nutrition to be able to sprout the seed. You don't even need to use a potting mix if you don't want. You can use an inert medium like cocoa core, peat moss, or even vermiculite. Here's some coarse vermiculite. Here's more of a fine vermiculite. What's important is that the medium holds moisture well and has some air space because seeds need water, air, and the right temperatures to sprout. Some seeds, like lettuce, even need some light to sprout. If you do use an inert medium, like any of the three that I shared with you, you need to make sure that once your plants have two true leaves, like you can see right here, true leaf, true leaf, that you transplant them into a larger pot or in the ground because that inert medium just isn't gonna have enough nutrition in it in order to support those young plants. That's one reason I like starting in potting mix because the potting mix already has some good nutrition in it. You could see, I didn't add anything and this super sweet 100 tomatoes are growing beautifully, super healthy. We could start adding our sifted potting mix right into our cells, but what I like to do is add some vermiculite. Vermiculite increases aeration, it enhances moisture retention, and it just makes it the soil even lighter. This works really nice for small seeds like lettuces and arugula and stuff. It makes it easier to push out of the soil and it also makes it easier for the roots to move throughout the soil the fresh starting roots. So I'll just take some fine vermiculite and add it in. You could use some coarse vermiculite too, but I have some fine vermiculite, so I'm just gonna use that. So I'll add that to my seed starting mix and then just mix it all in. This is really just gonna lighten the soil up even more and just make an ideal seed starting mix. After we finish mixing up all the soil, the next thing we're gonna do before we put it into cells is to wet it down. So let's get some water on the soil. We want it to be evenly moist, but we don't want it to be swampy because if your soil's too swampy, then it's gonna lack oxygen. And like we mentioned, seeds, they not only need water, but they need oxygen as well. So let's just mix this all up. Also, if your mix is too wet and swampy, then it's more prone to get fungal issues. There we go, that looks pretty nice. What we're looking for is, we wanna be able to grab some of the soil, bunch it up, it should hold its shape like this, but it shouldn't be dripping water. So that looks nice, just like that. So we can start adding this into our cells. Now, we can start filling our cells with our seed starting mix. I'm just gonna drop it in lightly like this. I'll show you my technique. Just drop it in, fill all these cells up just lightly like this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly just compress the soil, I'm not gonna press hard, but we wanna make sure that there's soil even at the bottom. So we're just gonna get rid of some of those air gaps, press it down lightly, then come back and add a little more soil. Just like this. Then I'm gonna lightly press it down to get one more time. Take a little out of here and put it into that one. Put it just like that. 
Next, we can start getting our seeds planted. The size of the seed you're planting will typically let you know how deep you should plant it. The larger the seed, the deeper it will go. So we're gonna be planting peppers here. And when planting any kind of seed, it's good to know the characteristics of that kind of plant, especially when it comes to germination. For instance, peppers, they will germinate in temperatures about 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll only take about seven to 10 days to germinate. But if the temperature of the soil is 55 degrees or lower, the pepper seeds may never germinate. So what I like to do is drop them in, cover them up just a little bit, like I showed you. And in order to create the scenario where the, where the soil is nice and warm, I'll take this, I'll take my whole entire seed tray and I'll put it on top of a heating mat, just like this. That'll help me get the ideal temperature to get these seeds sprouted. Then I'll take a humidity dome, like this one right here, and I'll drop it over the top. This keeps the moisture content high. We just need to make sure every couple days or so that we take the cover off just to let the soil and the whole area breathe a little bit so we don't get any fungal issues. I love these covers for a number of reasons. One is that they're individual. So if I start peppers down here and then maybe tomatoes over here, which sprout quicker, then I can just take the cover off just the tomatoes and, or just the peppers, and then the tomatoes will be able to sprout. Another thing is, you'll notice right at the center, there's an area right here. So when we're planting, when you're using these kinds of cells, you wanna make sure that area is cleaned out. So I'm just gonna clean it out like this because they have these drip irrigation kind of domes at the top. So you can water your seeds without even having to take it off, which is super convenient. You'll notice the water's dripping down, hitting that center and getting spread into the cells. I gotta show you this new tool that I started using this year. It makes both planting and transplanting seeds so much easier. Let me first fill this tray up. So we'll fill this tray up with soil to start. I'll come back to you when it's all full. When doing this, just like before, we wanna make sure we're pressing the soil down just a little bit to make sure it reaches all the bottom and there's not any big air gaps. Then we'll go back and fill it again. We got this all filled. Next, what we're gonna do is take this tool and it has holes at the bottom and lines up with every cell. So we'll just lay it over top like this. And then depending on the size of the seed is how kind of hard you'll press it down. I'm gonna be planting arugula, so they're a tiny seed. So we're not gonna to have to press it down really deeply. I'll show you. It's a tiny little seed, the arugula. So we don't wanna press it down deep. So we're just gonna gently press it on the first row just to make a sort of indentation. And this is the convenient part. It makes it go so quick. We're gonna take our tiny seed. We're gonna take them and we're gonna drop them right in. And it has a sort of funnel, so the seeds just drop right in. We'll drop all the seeds, just like this. Look how quick it makes it. We do this whole row really fast, just like this. And if we miss any seeds, we can easily just brush them in like that. Then we can take the top off and just lightly cover these seeds. Since these are tiny seeds, we don't want to cover them heavily. If you were doing bigger seeds, you would just press it down a little harder and just lightly cover the seeds just like this. So we do that for all the seeds. Then I would take my spray bottle and just water all the seeds in. After a few days, your seeds will sprout. And this is a tray that I planted that same way. Look how beautiful the germination is. And it makes it so quick and easy to do. I did mention that the tool works great for transplanting too. Let me show you the same tool we're gonna use. Let me just grab a pot, get one ready. Fill it up with a little bit of soil just like this, so we can transplant it into it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tray, we're gonna move it. I'm gonna take this right here. This is the same thing we use to plant the seeds. And it lines up, so we're gonna drop it just over top like this. Next, we can just press down on this and it's gonna pop the seeds up for me. So we just press down. And you'll notice it'll start to press the seeds up. You'll notice it popped up the seedlings. Now all we have to do is just take our finger like that, grab the seedling, you can see how healthy it is, and then transplant it into our pot. Just like this.
This makes it so it's a lot easier to pop the seedlings out. Look how all of them are popped out right there. Super convenient, makes planting and transplanting easier and quicker. So uh, I love using that tool. Then I'll just water this one in. When your seeds start to pop out of the ground, you wanna put them in an area that gets intense light. You can either use a grow light, that works good, or a greenhouse, whatever kind of setup you have, but you don't want them to go searching for the light. I also like to drop the temperatures down if possible for something like my tomatoes or even my brassicas, especially. When you bring the temperatures down to about the 60s, then that kind of makes them grow a little stockier because they don't try to spread out from just being so hot. Another thing you want to do is add a little bit of a fan so the plants get a light breeze. This helps build strong, stocky plants. Now that the seeds are sprouted and grown up, I like to bring them outside on nice days to acclimate them to the outside temperatures. This is called hardening off. You don't want to do it like immediately, just bring them out on a hot day and leave them out all day. Just slowly acclimate them to the temperatures because being outside is just way different than growing inside or in a greenhouse. If you're growing in deep cells like these, you can allow the plants to stay in the cells for a little bit longer. You'll notice the size of these plants still look doing well. But if you're going to grow in smaller cells like this, you want to make sure that you're transplanting the plants after they get the first two true leaves, either into the garden or into a larger pot. Something I want to mention really quick is if you're going to use potting mix to start your seeds in, make sure that the bag of potting mix isn't waterlogged. This one right here is pretty light, doesn't have any water in it. This one right here is super waterlogged. If your soil is waterlogged, then it's gonna lack oxygen. That's really gonna negatively affect your seed starting and it's also gonna negatively affect your roots because when the soil gets super waterlogged, it goes anaerobic, which means without oxygen and our seeds and our roots need oxygen to breathe. If there's one thing I would suggest to new gardeners, it's to not start your seeds too early. Over the years, I have started seeds so many different times. Like I've started my tomatoes in February, but I don't plant my tomatoes out till like mid-May. That's like three months of the tomatoes just growing before they go into the ground. If you have an area where you have a grow light or you have a greenhouse, you can start your stuff early, but don't go crazy starting things super early if you don't have a place to actually put them. Because tomatoes, they really need the right conditions outside in order to thrive and grow. Same thing goes with peppers or any of your plants. Planting your transplants into the garden too early will really set them back. So your tomatoes could be growing fantastic and then all of a sudden you put them in the ground too early and they just slow down and you basically just waste a lot of time. I've seen it over and over again where you take a tomato plant, it's been growing inside for like three months, you transplant it into the ground and then after a month, a tomato that started from seed, like a volunteer, is the same size as the one you started three months ago. So don't be overly eager to start some of your seeds. If you do wanna start some things early, you can. Just make sure you have a good setup for them but uh, overall, I've had really good luck starting tomatoes like six weeks before my time of actually planting them out. So again, I plant out my tomatoes in about the second week of May. I've started a lot of my tomatoes in early April and they've grown fantastic. The best thing to do for new gardeners especially is to journal when you're planting your seeds and then every year adjust it. This year I started stuff a little earlier because I was super eager to and I have a big greenhouse. But overall, when you're a new gardener, don't rush. If anything, plant things a little late rather than too early. And just transplant out your frost sensitive plants like tomatoes a little later than too early. So my last expected frost date is about April 20th here. I won't transplant my tomatoes into the garden until like the second week of May. So that's about three weeks after my last expected frost date. It's always better to be safe rather than sorry with all the time and effort you're putting into your young seedlings. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Tuck has been out here the whole time working hard. So don't forget to spam some hearts down low for the little boss. He's just watching over the seedlings. Just take a peek back there. He's watching over everything. He knows what to protect. So this guy, he might look like he's lounging, but he's really just surveying and he's just watching. He's really the watchman and he's also the leader. Me and Tuck had a lot of fun out here. We hope we provided you with some value and we hope we encourage you to start some of your own plants from seeds and gave you some ideas on how you can make an easy potting mix 
and how you should not rush to get your seed started, especially if you're new. Just make sure you're journaling because that'll be so beneficial in the future. I always reference my own journal for when I want to plant stuff out. Me and Tuck wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Jerry Hardy. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. We also wanted to mention to check out some of the merch and also a lot of the products that I used in this video, like the seed popper, the seed trays, and even the sifter, I'm selling a lot of that stuff on my website now because I have found these products to be the best and I wanna provide you guys with the best products. So you can check it out at teamgrow.us. We hope you had a blast out here. I know me and the little boss did. Time for us to sign out though. Tuck and James will be back at you again real soon. We. Oui.